Hello, this is Richard Fan from Honeywell Lake Venture. Um, look what is happening uh, across America now, the social unrest ignited by the death of uh, George Floyd. On the surface, uh, it seemed to be a typical uh, racial problem, but down below, I do think it's a problem of a polarized society where a lot of people do not have a lot of uh, good opportunities. They do not have a good uh, uh, medical service. Uh, uh, I mean, similar things are true across the globe. Uh, a lot of people uh, in uh, developing countries, uh, such as India and China, they do not have a good medical service because of the high cost and also a lack of uh, access to the trained doctors and the equipment. This is th this was exactly what prompted me to build my uh, previous uh, uh, surgical device company, which is surgical, to provide affordable surgical instruments to developing regions such as uh, China, India, and Brazil by disrupting the duopoly, by providing better technology. We start Honeywell Lake Ventures to, to bring the intelligence to minimally invasive surgery, MIS. We believe that intelligent surgical system will make surgery more affordable and more accessible to people in remote and less privileged regions. In the next uh, 15 minutes or so, I hope that uh, um, I can share with you my thoughts on uh, the future of uh, the surgery. In the next uh, 15 you... minutes or so, I will review the current state Hello? of uh, uh, surgery uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, hoping to put it in the right perspective, compare with the story of uh, smart uh, homes. There's many challenges in transforming current practice in surgery to the future where most people would uh, have more affordable, more accessible uh, surgery through maybe a more autonomous and intelligent uh, surgical system or surgical robots. There are many challenges in technology, uh, regulatory and reimbursement and industry monopoly. But of course, the opportunities uh, come with those challenges and allow our entrepreneur to innovate and disrupt the status quo, where we Honeywell Lake Ventures so want to be the catalyst for changes. Before we get into specifics, I would like to share from I mean, the, what's the reality? The reality here I show is still a messy uh, surgical suite with a lot of uh, different equipments or instruments from different manufacturers. Any part of the instruments uh, will be from different manufacturers, it's just a lot of box together. But most of those instruments that we're using, there's so many of those are mostly analog, a lot of them. Either in open or laparoscopic procedures. But everybody is saying that we are in a stage of a robotic surgical system, what we call the robot doc. But if you look at that, it's mostly a, um, just a mechanic arm holding different instruments. And there's many, many players uh, in general surgery, in uh, cardiovascular, in neuro, and so on and so forth. But they all similar. In a way, they are still using a mechanical arm hold the instrument, same old instrument you would use in the, in the most typical procedures. So where are we? I mean, really, um, if uh, you look at the open procedure, uh, that's uh, uh, a few hundred years story. It wasn't like that 40 years ago. And we use sutures and the scalpels. Then comes along with the instrument like a stabling device make it a little easier. With the scope and the ultrasonic device and RF device, they make 
it, it uh, made the laparoscopic procedure uh, possible. And then the, the fancy system from uh, intuitive. Um, a lot of people called them um, the fancy uh, robotic uh, system is a robotic system. Um, this the fancy system from uh, intuitive surgical is not a robotic surgical system not even close to the metaphor we show in the sci-fi uh, clips. No, it's not. It's only a system that allows the uh, surgeons to sit down, to be, gui uh, be guided with three-dimensional imaging, and uh, translate the filtering the motions from surgeons to mechanical arms uh, holding different instruments. Perform a typical lap laparoscopic procedures. Actually, a nice share of those procedures are hysterectomy and prostatectomy. It's not even as uh, autonomous as those uh, used in automobile assembly line. By itself, we cannot function, we cannot operate on patients, and not even the simplest procedures. The, and the factors or the instrument used in all those systems we're seeing today um, are those uh, uh, same used in typical uh, labs, uh, laparoscopic procedure or sometimes even open procedures. Procedure. They're all analog devices. All those systems, uh, they, they are not connected. They cannot communicate uh, with each other. Sometimes they cannot even communicate with the, the interfactor they are using. So there's no base for uh, AI. So to sum, it up, to sum it up, so we're at the stage 2.0 or 2.5 at the most. If we want to move forward, we need to convert analog device to digital device. Actually, um, a lot, I, 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 I don't think, uh, I, I, I don't know how many people actually went through the transition from landline to mobile phone to smartphone now we're happy. The landline we're happy now is more like the open procedure we have the version 1.0. And then we have the cell phone from Nokia, and uh, it's like our MI procedure or even a fancy system. Now the smartphone now is what we really want for our, or what we vision uh, in Honeywell, the intelligent surgical system should be. We have more sensory in different surgical instruments. We have uh, uh, some, uh, at least uh, uh, auto autonomous action by itself. It, it, can, it should be an integrated system that you can see and treat and heal without the limitation of current clinical protocol, clinical specialties. One day, MedPod, like maybe uh, like the smartphones, uh, will, will be everywhere at doctor's office, at all remote uh, villages, and, and even outer space, which can run diagnosis and perform medical procedures with or without the guidance of surgeons, depending upon the complexity of uh, 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 surgeries or procedures. Now, what's the basic, base, basics of intelligence, as, as we repeat it? How do we get there from uh, uh, current uh, version 2.5, the end of war, to intelligent surgical system? version 3.0. We're not even talking about MedPod, uh, uh, version 4.0 yet. Honeywell Lake Ventures uh, was founded to do just that. We uh, dedicate uh, ourselves to the transformation of our current surg surgeries to where surgeons can use smart devices, smart instruments in complex procedure, and maybe a MedPod or system handle simple procedures. So in order to do that, we need to uh, have a box, provide all kinds of powers, AC, DC, RF, ultrasound, and so on and so forth, and the sensors on each instrument used in typical procedures. We're willing to uh, work with uh, uh, our interpreters uh, or those uh, projects that are making sensing technology for surgical applications. We need an open shared system like uh, Android used in, in, a, in a phone that allows those developers, those uh, uh, people developing a surgical instrument to, to share the same common um, uh, operating system. 
there's uh, many challenges, as we put it. We don't have uh, power. We, uh, there's uh, analog device and the regulatory related issue, adoption from doctors, pays, and patients. Certainly, it's a complex, uh, it's a very complicated, and there's an efficacy issue, there's a liability related issues. But I understand that um, opportunities always uh, uh, come when we solve the problem, we, when uh, faced on the uh, challenges that we have. So we can, we can certainly a, a have a box that, uh, as we said, a, a, a box integrated into your operating table, provide all those energies, and can control those uh, uh, instruments. That's actually uh, readily available. We actually put together a system like that uh, ourselves. So can we add a lot of sensors or uh, those technologies uh, that allows the instrument to interact with it? with each other. Only those smart instruments can work together and make surgery intelligent. We, can we make some of those procedures, simple procedures, automatic? Especially when there is no alternatives, like getting stasis, to stop bleeding in an emergency, battlefield or remote areas. We, Honeywell Lake Ventures uh, wants to find the holy grail, see, treat, and heal in surgery. The intelligence is the key. Currently, optic imaging, the scope, the scopes are, um, are the eyes for surgeons, are designed for human surgeons. If decision makers are surgeons with different sensors other than human eyes, we can have different way of saying registration and uh, guidance uh, during the procedure. It should be a paradigm shift. Surgical application assumes a map and the registration of the instrument in a human setting for surgeons. Unfortunately, a perfect real-time imaging and the navigation is very hard to come by. Can we use a lower resolution impedance mapping infrared imaging or other imperfect modalities together with pre-acquired CTMI imaging or data to guide the end factors to treat the patients. We sure can do that. So for sim similar procedures, a common standard allow all those units or MedPAR to, to make machine learning possible, but current entrenched players like the big boys uh, JNJ Medtronics, so we'll do it. So who's going to disrupt those MIS market? Honeywell Lake Venture is here to work with our partners in the floor to disrupt those markets. We can leverage all those sensing technology used, uh, used or commercialized in consumer electronics and they use those in surgical instruments. A small instrument can be one that an RFID or a chip to identify itself, or a GPS uh, module to orient itself to, uh, um, <clears throat> to do many more. There's uh, many, many different kinds of sensors that are available now. So can we have an open and a shared um, system and uh, inside a con central control unit uh, in our breathing table, which delivers energy uh, to all those instruments and then control those instruments that we're using in a typical operating suite. So now we don't need a, a surgical suite, we just have an um, uh, operating table. The table itself, we call, you can call it a med part. It, it can control all those units, share data, and it will form the base of AI. Honeywell Lake Venture is named after the place in China where I grew up before I uh, went to the state for my PhD degree at Purdue. Honeywell Lake is in the middle of nowhere in China. My elder brother um, uh, told me that I was crazy when I told, told him that some American landed on the moon many years ago. 
But now he knows more about the uh, US, the pres person uh, Trump, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, thanks largely to the access of information, uh, primarily from the smartphone. I've seen the disparity in information access and, and also in medical service between the poor and the rich and between those uh, have and those have not, between US and the developed countries. I do think an intelligent um, surgical system or something resembles to MedPod in the sci-fi clip can help to bridge the gap to operators uh, because the operator uh, using those system won't need so much training. And the system can even tackle some basic uh, procedure autonomously. Eventually, our mission, Honeywell's uh, mission, is to make complex procedure easier and easy procedure automatically. I want to invite you guys, uh, our partners in the course, to work with us in this great endeavor. Thank you.